Standard position. So when we sketch angles called rotational angles on the Cartesian plane, the xy axis, with the initial arm, where the angle starts as a positive x axis. So your initial arm always starts on the positive x axis. You did this last year. These angles can be positive. If you move counterclockwise, they will be negative. If you move clockwise, they're negative. If you move counterclockwise, they're positive. It kind of seems backwards. Okay, so we're going to do uh, 100. That was my anger. I was trying to <laughs> just put it into my own hand. Okay, so my hint to you always, and by hint I mean do this always. So it's not really a hint. It's me telling you. <laughs> I don't know why I called it a hint. Um, is to draw your axes and then label them. So boom, boom, zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. And you could keep technically keep going, correct? I'm not going to because I'm going to give you 120 degrees. What's the fastest way to figure it out? Now, let's think about it this way. We know that 30 is like a third of the way, 60 is like two-thirds of the way, 45 is directly up the middle, right? We know how to draw those. So if I give you 120, you can either look at the 90 and say it's 30 more, or you can look at the 180 and say it's 60 less. Either way, you're going to get the same thing. Now, I'm not bringing out a protractor to check and see if you're, oh, two degrees off, you're wrong. I'm not going to do that. But if you're like drawing 120 as a 150 you, and then you just label it as 120, that, that doesn't float, okay? So we are always going to, I always put a little dot in the middle because that's a little rotator, you know, like how you used to get given those little like metal things and you could put them in your paper and then you could clip them like a duotang and then they spin your spinners. Yeah, pretend that's that. Oh, Macy, you missed out. I will get you one. I don't know how you made your grade 12 without one. That's just sad. All right. You can just spin your spinner. All right. This here is your initial arm. I'm going to label it. I want you to know that. Okay, it's an initial arm. You have to write it. You have to draw it. Yeah, because that's where it starts. If not, it could start anywhere. Which it shouldn't. It should always start there. Now, 120 is 30 more than 90. So it's about 30 more. So I'm going to go, boom. Or I could say it's 60 less than 180 and still go, boom. Okay, this is called my terminal arm because it's where it terminates. Ugh, it keeps connecting my eyes even if I take a break. Now that's important. The next thing is important, extremely important. Important, important. Like we could say important -er. It's not a real word, but I'm using it. Important -er. We start at our initial arm and we go to our terminal arm with an arrow like that. And the reason why is you're showing that it's going counterclockwise, which means this is a what angle? A positive angle. So we label it as 120 degrees. Don't forget the degree or it's a radian measure. Okay. Now let's do a negative angle because we're rebels without a cause. Why would we stop here? So we still have to label it. We still start here, which is zero degrees. Then we go to here, which is negative 90 degrees. Then we go here, which is negative 180 degrees. Then we go to here, which is negative 270 degrees. And 360 degrees. So, Let's do um, negative 210. So 210 is either 60 less than 270 or 30 more than 180. I'm still going to draw my initial arm and my little metal holding thing that it turns on. This is my initial. You don't have to write initial and terminal. I just was proving that. You do have to draw the initial, the terminal, and the arrow, and the angle, but you don't have to write these words. I just did that so you knew that that's what they were called. So on this one, I won't do that. So we have initial, and then we have each go 30 more than negative 180. So we go here, that's my terminal, and then I start my arrow at my initial, and then I go around like this with an arrow, 
And that's negative one, mm, 210. Okay? The terminal arm is where the angle ends, that should be an S, and it can be in any quadrant on or on any axis. So it could, like if it was negative 180, you'd stop on the axis, right? If it's negative 270, you'd stop on an axis. What angle could sport, can sport, yeah, not even changing it, at each of the axis? So what angles? Well, we drew them up here, right? 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, or 0, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360. Basically, all 90 degree angles, right? Every 90, you're going to have an arm, which makes sense because I can draw a 90 in each of these, correct? Okay. Sketch these. Let's go. <laughs> so, I'm going to... Everyone better have this. If you don't have it labeled and stuff, expect marks being lost. Okay? Yeah, so this is... Yeah, because it keeps going on. If not, it's just a line that stops, which is not real. <laughs> Zero, and then 90. And people are like, that's enough, because it falls... Don't be lazy. Lazy doesn't... Lazy is not helpful. If you're lazy and then you lose a mark, don't whine about it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> lazy is crazy? I agree. Yeah. Good one. I'm going to make a stamp for that. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy is crazy. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I'll give it to you, Seamus, and you can stamp people. <laughs> okay. So we start with our initial at zero. And then we go to 45, which would be halfway, and you just do a little shy. Halfway. And then arrow up 40. 140. Okay, so we label it 0, 90, 180, 170, 360. Start at 0 and we go to 140. 140 is 40 less than 180, so a little less than half this way. Because it's going to be 40 up from here, right? Arrow it, 140 degrees. Yep. I believe in you. I don't know. Make them look right. Yeah. She means the arrow. Yeah. I believe you can do it. So then we have zero, negative ninety, negative one eighty, negative two seventy, negative three sixty. So 240 is 30 less than 270 or 60 more than 180. So it's going to be like here and then like here and then clockwise. Okay, then we need 340. Zero, 90, 180. 370, 360. We started our initial, and 340 is 20 less than 360, so something like that. And then to go counterclockwise, positive. 340 degrees. Panelistic Pac Man. Okay, then we're going to flip over. Okay, we're going through conversions. So you guys did this last year. If you're going degrees to radians, pi on top, remember we could just divide by 180 and then add the pi every single time, right? Divide by 180, add the pi. Then radians to degrees, you do the opposite. You multiply by 180 over pi. If it has a pi, the pi should cancel off, right? If it's a radian measure with a pi, that's how you know you're right. So here it says, when an angle is given in degrees, it must have the degrees symbol given immediately after it. When it's measured in radians, the angle has rads after it or nothing at all. So you can have a rad, or you can have a radian, or you can have nothing. That is a radian measure. The only way that you can have a degree is if you have a degree symbol. If the number does not have a degree, it's assumed to be a radian. So make sure you have a radian measure after it. 
So we're going to convert from degrees to radians. Degrees to radians, pi on top. And then RD pub if you need to have that. Dr. Pot or RD pub. Okay. So we're converting from degrees to radians, pi on top. So I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. So I'm going to go 315 times pi over 180. which is technically 315 pi over 180. Now, if you put that into your calculator with the pi, will you ever get a fraction out? No, because the pi is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, which can never turn to a fraction. So you'd have to put it in without that. So what do you get? 7 pi over 4. Now, sometimes... Most, actually, most people can do exact values correctly. It's when I ask for it in a rounded decimal or something in a numeric response where I get the wrong answer. People will go 7 divided by 4 and add a pi to it. If I want this as a decimal, what would the decimal be? Type it in. Honestly, decimal's done worse than the exact value. What would it be as a decimal? 7 times pi divided by 4. You have to put the pi in it if I want it as a decimal, correct? It. 5.5? Yeah, we'll do 5.5. So I'm going to do approximately, which is two squiggly lines. This is, yeah, a squiggly and a squiggly. Because it turns an equal sign into a squiggle, right? Which means approximately. Uh, that's for math. Uh, that's for English of some sort. I don't know what it is. Okay, now some people will take 5.5, hit math, enter, enter, say, I can turn it into a fraction left, I put the pi in. Yeah, you have a terminating decimal, but that's not actually what the decimal was, right? You take the decimal you have in front of you and go math, enter, enter, it will not turn into a fraction. Now, let's convert 70. Go, you try it. I want it converted to an exact value, which means a fraction with a uh, pi, and to the nearest tenth, both. So I want you to be able to do both. So for 70, we're going to go 70 times pi over 180, which technically gets us 70 pi over 180, which reduces to? And what is it to one decimal place? Now, I don't have to write radians behind it, but I could. I could go rad. I could say radians. Why is the radians a unit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is a radian? You just did a radian is a, is this, it's just a measure. So you guys are confused. You don't go, what is a degree? Because from little on you're shown degrees, right? But everyone goes, what is a radian? And I'm like, radian measure? <laughs> you didn't say it like that. You're like, what is a radian? Because you are masculine. So that's right. what I saw. Yes. More ma I can't do it. I'm I'm a girl. What is a degree? That's where I go. Or what is a radian? Okay, anyways, nonetheless, <laughs> sidetracked. Um, radian measure is just another measure of an angle. We're just so used to what does one degree look like in 45. We're really good at stating them because you're, you're showing them your whole life. But a radian is just another measurement of an angle. The reason why we learn radians, which are actually more helpful than degrees are, is when we're going we're gonna to look at um, word problems where we take a, something that's circular. So like we say a Ferris wheel over time or a wheel rotating over time with a nail in the tire. We do real fun things. Anyways, we're going to look at um, a spinning object, a circular object over time, and it'll actually come out as a sine graph or a coast graph. Well, if I say that it spins, that this wheel spins in 180 degrees, you're going to be like, you're an idiot. That's the, the, the 360, right? But radian measure is, more, is not a degree. It's a radian, so we can say, hey, it spins in 2 pi radians because that's an actual like length, whereas a degree is stuck to a circle. So it's, you need them in real life situations. Now, if we did radians as little kids, and then I popped in a degree here and said, this is degrees, you'd be like, what the heck's that? It's just another measurement for the exact same thing as what we've used before. But it, it, we need to learn it because we need it for word problems. All right. What if we convert from radians to degrees? RD pi. Radians to degrees. Pi on bottom. 
Now, if it has a pi, the great thing is they'll cancel off. If it doesn't, you're going to have to divide by pi. So it's negative 7 times 180 divided by 3. Or negative 420 degrees. Don't forget the degree symbol. Don't forget the degree symbol. If you forget the degree symbol, what is it? It's a radian and you're wrong. And then you'd be like, but look, you knew it was a degree. And I'd be like, no, girl. I didn't know. It did not have a degree symbol. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can refer to you as a guy and everyone. I can prove you strong. Not given a gender to it. It's more of a saying, you know? Yeah. Okay. Radians. Negative 1.4 radians. So we go radians to degrees, <laughs> pi on bottom. So... We're technically going to go negative 1.4 times 180, and now we actually have to divide by the pi because it doesn't cancel off. Because they put the radian measure, they put the pi in it already. When they did the rounded decimal like we did up here, they did that, right? So now go negative 1.4 times 180. If I wanted that an exact value, it would technically be negative 252 over pi. Degrees, isn't that a really nice degree? Wow. And then if we divide it by pi, we get approximately negative 80 decimal 2. The approximates? Yep, that's an actual math. Okay. Yep. Can you change the first from the radian to like a fractional radian? No, because you can't put the pi back in. Well, you could, but then you would just be going negative 1.4. You'd be dividing it by pi. So you'd just be doing this part initially to get the original and then times it by 180. So it probably won't work for you, but you could. You just have to divide the pi back out. Okay, so I won't make you do a ton today because I didn't want to finish the whole thing. Plus, I got sidetracked. But we're page... 175. I didn't even write anything down. <laughs> oh, that page just looks time consuming. That was a, I've never had a gasp before getting to the number. I didn't even put a number sign. Just page what's oh, oh, that page. Not that page. That page just terrible. That's what I heard about that page. <laughs> I'm going to add more just because of the sign. <laughs> math is good. Math is great. Numbers 1 to 5 BC. 